Hi, welcome to a warm but cloudy day in Chesterfield. It has predicted uh, rain sometime later in the day, so I thought I'd start and make a start on this video. And again, we're away from the main pond and we're going to get away from the fry vat. What we're going to be looking at is a replacement to the heater that I've got. And as Christmas has come early, I'll just pan out. If you look over my shoulder, a little parcel that's arrived down there. So we've got a little box that's uh, arrived, we're going to unbox it, I've not had a look at it, I know the specs, I know the details and I know I could have got one probably a little bit cheaper, probably a bit less uh, hassle but when you see the unboxing and you see the setup it's going and you'll understand why I've gone for this, uh, uh, this type. So sit back and enjoy. close with the box and you'll notice straight away that it's a remora heat pump and it's Wi-Fi. I'll explain that a lot later why. It is a remora i12 gross weight of the pallet is 43 kilos and I think that works out as about 35 oh, so it says there, 37 kilos. So what we've got here is a Remora inverter driven Wi-Fi i12 air source heat pump. It is classed as plug and play so hopefully everything that I need should be here and I'll have a quick look through what we've got. So the first thing I noticed is not only has it got a built-in plug, it's got an RCD breaker on it as well and I think that's five meters of cable that's hardwired straight into the unit. Also coming out the same point is some white cable. This is the Wi-Fi unit. So basically you've got, I think it's 10 meters of cable, it might even be a bit longer, and an extension. So you can move your Wi-Fi control unit closer to your router or your signal to help improve that. So you can control it on a smart live app. You've also got the unions or the adapters for fitting it. You've got the condensate outlet pipe. You've got the four feet and you've got a winter cover that obviously probably be a summer cover depending on the temperature settings. One of the things that uh, showed me towards this was the nice black cover uh, colour because where it's going to be fitted it, so I don't want to stand out, I don't want to be seen and the beige ones would be a bit more noticeable but the instant thing I did notice was the overall dimensions it is just 826 long the height of it is just 552 and the width of it, the total width of it is 370 and like I mentioned the weight is about 35 kilos so it's got the direct controls there manual controls or whatever you want to call them and then it's got the remote controls via the Wi-Fi app there. It is inverter driven and it's not an on-off inverter which means it's more accuracy with the uh, control of the temperature but also the usage, the energy usage. If it only needs, uh, if, it's, if it's a couple of uh, points of a degree below the temperature it needs to be at, it will only start off slow and keep the speed ramped at slow and only increase if it needs a, a massive uh, input of energy, so it is very efficient and uh, very quiet. And like I say, it's, uh, it's got its own built-in 13 amp plug and I think the maximum power it pulls is just over 6 amp. So again, no issues, no problems there with it and it should be a lot better and a lot easier to use than the existing Electro. That's the pond at the moment and as you can see there's no real position to locate at the front. Down the side 
between the filter house and the fence I could technically put it there and blow it out uh, that way which is still a possibility but at the moment it's going to go at the back on the back wall and be fed directly straight through where the heaters are so that's the, elec uh, the electro heater in situ at the moment and what I'm going to do is basically at first sight there's the two union valves I'm going to set the heater out from the two union valves and in there put a bypass and a couple of sweeping elbows to take it through the back wall. The back wall's got about a four f from there it's got about a two foot drop so that'll give me enough space to uh, scrape out put a level base in to fit the SOC pump there. I'm not sure if you can see that's the rear of the shed and it's a bit of uh, spare land, wasteland and it's just where I store a bit of plastic spare tub as such but just there where the house brick is is exactly where we're going to fit it and then feed the controls through there so you've got double skin on the filter house and you've got a fence so you've got probably about 6 8 inch thick wall I'm not sure if you can see the hole in the panel but that is the height below the pipe when connecting into so I've got sufficient fall down there to where the house brick is so if I put a uh, course of bricks some pavers down there it should in theory give me enough height for the return to go straight back at that height but again that's plan A we'll wait to see what plan B comes up with this is what the bypass setup is uh, going to be roughly like so that union valve and that union valve is going to replace the two union valves already under the workbench and the two bits here will go out to the air source heat pump and there'll be two valves on there as well so we can bypass straight through if need be or we can adjust the flow here to suit then if we've got any issues we can use these two union valves to close them off while we go outside so the six cutoffs there are about 60mm I'll have to go in there there, 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 there and there. So I can sit that square and hopefully it'll save me a bit of time later on in the uh, fitting stage so the less time it takes the less the heat will rub off.
we've got there's a UV and the two union valves. The union valves coming out at that end, this end, and strip back to the union here. And what we're going to put in its place is the union valve onto your UVs going here. So you've got there, there, and that one is going the other side where the heater is at the moment. And then in theory, that. So that is the branch that's going in in its place down there. So if we need to open that and open that. So the water comes in, goes through. These two will be on the outside in front of the, in front of the SRC pump. It's just double union just so I don't have to go around the shed, through the gate, around the back. I can do it this way. And if we need to bypass it, basically close that one. Close that one, that one, open that, and then it will bypass straight through back to the pond. If I want to use a heater, just open that, open that, close that, and it will go to the pump. If I need to change anything, I can crank that to accommodate in between. So that's the branch the bypass made and everything. What I need to do next is disconnect the heater, take the pipe work out of the unions, put a hole in the wall, fit that back into its place and then connect the air source heat pump to there and there. That's what the elbows, sweeping 90s are for and that. So basically that will come down, that will come across, that will take it into the air source heat pump. There, because it's 263 down and that will work in there and then the return will come that way to there. So let's see how we get on with that lot. Just a few more bits and bobs about the unit that isn't quite noticeable on the video. Here's a smart looking tidy piece of kit. It is very compact and uh, if it does everything it says on the label then I'll do well to up with it. You just say plug and play so it comes with absolutely everything that's required. All you need to do is just connect it up, switch it on and away it goes. Because of the position of where I'm fitting it, the Wi-Fi was an option that I was really looking for as it, uh, to get to the unit I have to go down the side of the pond, I have to move the flowers, I have to open the side gate, I have to go round the back and climb through. And it's not quite quick and easy but with the app it's just a matter of opening the app up on the phone and finding the temperatures there, you can set, adjust the settings, you can adjust the temperatures and then you can adjust one of the three modes of usage. This model is a 12 kilowatt model, which is the 4 kilowatts output, not input. It only pulls 9 amp if it's running full whack. The others that I was looking at were uh, inverter driven as well, but they were just on or off, which meant be a 2 degrees difference on the uh, temperature of the in and out of the water before it kicks in. And then it will run full whack until uh, it gets back up to temperature. This is just a gradual step, and it will just use a little bit of energy if it needs a little bit of energy just to top it up and uh, it's a lot more efficient. Stay tuned and check out part 2 once uh, I get it uploaded and see how it works and how it, uh, it looks. If you enjoyed the video or you're interested in the air source heat pump, stay tuned to check out the next part. If you've got any questions or you want to know any more information, just check me out on A Koi Enthusiast on Facebook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Check out some more videos or like me on Facebook. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy filming.